Hello and welcome to Richie's Truck and Auto. What we're going to show you today is an LML Duramax uh, CP4 to CP3 conversion. I've gone ahead and done the conversion on this vehicle already. I've got a CP4, um, a CP3, and all the plumbing associated with it torn apart, laying out here on the uh, on the shelf, and I'm going to show you its basic operation. So here's the back side of a CP4. Uh, the gear pump has been removed. This is the back side of a CP3 over here. It's very similar, except this has a three plunger design. This is a two plunger design. Um, up top here is the fuel regulator. And the fuel comes in on this port right here, crosses over the back side of the body, uh, lubricates the inside of the body, comes up through here, out of the regulator, and feeds both of these plungers over here. Now this is one of the plungers that have been removed and taken apart. Um, this is the follower that rides on the two lobe camshaft down inside over there. Uh, and that plunges these actuators right here, and that's what creates your, uh, your high pressure fuel in the fuel rails. And over here is a CP4 with the majority of the plumbing that was removed from this truck over here. It's relatively, uh, you know, a little complicated, but basically you have your, uh, this is your fuel feed here from the tank. It runs up over to this. This is where your filter head would go, loops back around again through this right here. Um, this one here sits on top of the engine. Anyone with a Duramax is pretty familiar with this. This is the, uh, the vacuum test port for checking uh, the fuel draw out of, the, uh, out of the pump all the way to the tank. So the, the route, the passages that the fuel takes is these two high pressure lines come over to here and feed the uh, passenger side fuel rail. On the back side of the pump over here, this is a return pressure. Uh, this one runs along this little line over here. This is the return port back to the return system, the return circuit to the tank. Uh, that feeds your ninth injector over here, which has been cut short. But this is the uh, control solenoid for the ninth injector located in your downpipe of your LML Duramax. Now on the front side, they do look very similar. They use the same gear, same nut. Um, this one is obviously missing the adapter that bolts it to the front housing of the, uh, of the engine. Um, and you can clearly see this one kind of looks like an airplane engine. The other plunger sits over here on this side. And this one here has no defined plungers. Um, the regulator is located on the back side as opposed to this one having it on top. Uh, on the back of a CP4, this little port over here is the fuel temp sensor. That's what this little sensor is right here. Uh, now let's go up to the top of the engine and show you what the CP3 conversion looks like once it's done. So, it's still a little bit difficult to see down inside of here, but that is the CP3. Um, it sits very much the same as the, uh, as the CP4 does. Uh, a lot of the plumbing has been removed. It's capped off on the rail where the second feed goes because the CP3 utilizes only one line. Um, this line right here at the front of the rail crosses down under the turbo, runs back up the other side, and it feeds the driver's side rail. This one skinny little line right here delivers fuel to the driver's side rail from the passenger side rail. Um, the front side of the driver rail over here this is your return regulator. Now the uh, previous Duramax engines don't have this one. Um, this one controls, I believe it's low RPM fueling, um, and the regulator on the CP4 or CP3 controls everything thereafter as far as the, the fueling goes. Um, this one returns right to the feed, the circuit right here running down under the turbo. The feed and return run parallel to each other underneath. Um, that one is now feeding directly into the CP3 because this particular vehicle has a lift pump at the tank now. So the whole fil filter head has been removed. <clears throat> um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, that's that's the overview of this, this system here. Um, the CP3 delivers much more volume than the CP4 does and is definitely not susceptible to the, uh, to the rupturing as the CP4 has come accustomed to, uh, to being known for. Um, it is a little bit involved to do a CP3 conversion on these here as you have to access the, the front cover of the engine to remove the four bolts that hold the injection pump in. Um, the CP3 does not have to be timed like the CP4 is, uh, is advised to be done. But here's a view from the other side here. It's really not too bad. And that's it. Tried to keep it short, because I know not everybody is, uh, is as well versed on, the, uh, on these injection pumps as the next guy might be. But that's it. Thanks for watching. Enjoy.